it's your favorite Java programmer, Pogosic29 here, and welcome to episode one of GitHub Basics. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to teach you guys how to, uh, you know, create an account on GitHub and then create your repo, your repository. Now, uh, before we begin, just two quick things. The first is school is beginning for me tomorrow. So you can expect the uh, the amount of videos I make to go down. I don't know how much school will affect it, but uh, we will see. So don't. So school is starting tomorrow, just so that you guys know. The second thing is um, this series is going to be very short. I have planned today's episode, which is like an introduction and creating a repo. Uh, the next episode will be how to push content to the repo, and the third will be how to pull content from the repo. And that's really all I can think of that you need to um, get started with it. If you guys can think of anything else, feel free to let me know. So, um, uh, in order to get started, uh, in this episode, I'm just going to show you guys how to set up with GitHub, so you can ignore that for now. But in the next episode, we will get to using Smart Git HG. So I'm going to go ahead and log out. And so when you're when you want to sign up, you can go ahead, and pick a username, an email, and a password, and sign up for GitHub. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. So once you are logged in, you can go ahead and click create a new repo, that little book with the plus. Uh, then you can go ahead and give it a repository name. Now for these um, tutorials, I'm going to be using um, Pogo Ball as an example, so we're going to go ahead and name the repository Pogo Ball. And you can go ahead and give a description, this is optional, but it will show up on your repo if you choose to. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a description, and we will say, uh, a paintball plugin for Minecraft. And for those of you that don't know what I'm referring to repo, I'm talking about a repository, which is like a page where all your code is stored. Uh, you're going to want it to be, um, public, because private you need to pay for, and, uh, at least in this case, I want everyone to be able to access the code. Uh, then initialize this repository with a readme. You're probably going to want to check that. And then you can go ahead and choose a git. You can ignore the git ignore. And if you don't know what the license is, you can ignore it. Basically, um, the three things here. The readme uh, contains information, and that will show up at the bottom of the um, GitHub page, which I'll show you. The git ignore, which we'll get into in the next episode, will tell GitHub which um, which types of files it should ignore. Like if you want to ignore .class files because they're compiled and they're not um, and they're not code, then we would add that. If we want to ignore Eclipse or IntelliJ settings files, we can do that. And the license basically tells the uh, user what they can do. Can they copy the code? Can they edit the code? Whatever you want. So I'm not going to put a license in, but um, you can choose that. It does look like you can also go to choosealicense.com. So that is pretty cool. So you can go ahead and take a look at that. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and give it a GPL version 2. Basically, what that says is requires anyone who distributes the code to make the source available under the same terms. So that sounds pretty good. So as you can see, um, we are now, this is now the official, this is now the GitHub page, which um, contains everything that you need to, that contains all of your code. So at the top you'll see that's your username and that is your repo, because if you click on your username then you can find your other repositories that you have made. 
Uh, here's the description, which you can always edit. Then there are comments, branches, releases, and contributors, and I think that this episode is a good time to explain a lot of this stuff. Um, a comet, or a commit, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, if you know, please let me know, um, is basically any time someone makes a change to the code. So right now, when I just added this, this is an initial comet, I'm going to call it, uh, and, or a commit, I don't know. So this is the initial commit, and basically, uh, this is adding the code. So in the next episode, when we go to upload the Pogo Ball code, we're making a comet to the code. And then when, so if you were to ever change anything, like if I were to add an update or fix a bug, and then I pushed or uploaded the code again, then that would be another comet. I'm gonna call it. So you'll see you have the license and the README. The this license is just the. Uh, the uh, license that I chose, you can, you know, choose one if you want or not. Then the readme.md. MD is Markdown, that's the language that is used by GitHub, basically just for, like, the title and whatever. So, um, as you can see, all it says is the title of the repo and the description. So if you go ahead and click on that, um, we can go ahead and edit this. You can actually click edit and you can edit it right from within GitHub. We, or you could also edit it on your computer and then push it. So let's go ahead and make the edit and we will call it Pogo Ball in capitals. A paintball plugin for Minecraft by YouTuber uh, Pogo Stick 29 Dev. And one cool thing that you can do is you can actually um, I don't think I'm going to get into a markdown tutorial, but you can do, like, linking. So now if I go here, it'll say by... Uh, that didn't work. Alright, because basically you can... Oh, I think it's, uh, like, that. Yes. So now, if I click on Pokestick 29 dev it will actually take me to my YouTube channel. So, th that, that's just, like, one of the things you can do with Markdown. You can also do lists by using the asterisk. Um, so if I go, like, 1, 2, then you'll see it'll make a list. But that's basically the description, which contains the information and maybe, like, any important things you want to look at. Now, in the comment summary... It's by default update readme.md, so that's fine. And when we click commit changes, you will see that we now have two commits. And first the initial commit, then just now we updated readme.md. And if you go ahead and click on browse code, it will show you all of the changes. So we removed Pogo Ball and we put it again in capitals. We removed this original line and then we added more stuff to that line. Now, sorry. All right, let's go back to Pogo Ball. Now, branches are basically, you can have more than one branch. So let's say you want to have a release branch, which contains the latest working code, but you also want to have a development branch. And the development branch contains, like, the latest code that may or may not work. So you can have more than one branch, and each branch can contain different codes, uh, different code, and then you can, you know, merge the branches later if you want. I don't think I'm going to get into that, but if you guys are really interested, I, I guess I probably could. Releases are, um, basically, um, uh, releases are basically like, uh, if you have some code and you want to, you know, you can mark it as 1.0, and I believe you can also build it. So if I wanted to provide a jar file for someone to download, then I believe I could build this and, and then give them a jar to download. And the contributors are basically, you can add more people to work on the same project. So if you're working with other people, they can all contribute to the same project. Um, that looks like it's about it for there. So now let's just go through the sidebar and see everything. So first there's code. Now here's the issues. Issues are basically where people can open up issues and you can see them and easily respond to them. So if anyone had like a question or a problem, then you could just click new issue, give it a title, and give it a, you know, tell, say what's wrong with it, if there's any problems, and then, you know, you can, then other people can look at it. So just uh, some basic error, some basic like issue tracking. Pull requests. Um, 
if someone that does not work on your team wants to contribute code, let's say that they found a problem or they want to add something new, so they and they write the code that they that they uh, that they want to use that they want you to use, but they don't have permission to actually push it. So what they'll do is they can fork the repository, which means it will create a duplicate of this repository under their name, and it will have all of the code. Then they can edit however they want on their own repository, and they can submit a pull request. And they can say, please pull my repository into yours because I fixed this issue. And if they choose to do that, then your changes, the changes from the repository that the other person made, will be pulled into this repository. So that's basically what that is. Now, a wiki. Um, wiki is basically just contains a bunch of pages with information about your... Um, you know, like, you could have usage, setup, version history, you know, any different informational things you want. Pulls will just show you basically, like, how many pull requests, how many issues you have, just some stuff like that. Graphs, again, will just show you activity that's been going on. You can choose which ones you're interested in. Network. I believe network shows different gra uh, network shows uh, different branches and different pull requests. So, like, here's my master, and I've made two co comments to it, or commit comments to it. So, you can click on one to see more information about it. But, like, so if I were to make a second, um, a second, uh, branch, or someone were to fork it, then it would probably, I'm sure it would also show up there. Finally, you can go into settings, where you can change some different things, the repository name, the default branch, um, you can change different features, um, GitHub Pages is pretty cool, you can create a, um, a little website that will automatically pull information from your repo, uh, Danger Zone is where you can, like, you know, delete whatever you want, um, collaborators, you can add other people that you want to work with you and give them permission, uh, service hooks are for, like, uh, if you use any of these services, you can hook uh, GitHub into your, uh, you can hook GitHub into them. And then deploy keys, I'm not, I believe that has to do with, like, building and, and uh, whatever, but uh, that's not really important. Then just up in here, you if you watch the, um, if you watch the uh, repo, then you will get information about it, like notifications. If you star it, basically, it'll be one of your starred things, and you can see it. And forking, I already talked about. Now, down here, where you see the clone URL, basically, um, if you want to download, if you click download zip, what it'll do is, it will download all of the code from the current branch as a zip file. So if I click download zip, and then you wait for a second for it to download, and I go ahead and open it, then you will see that, let's give it one second, then you should see, here's Pogoball Master, and you can see it has the readme.md and the license both in that file. So when you add code, people can download the code as a zip file. Alright. Well... I believe that that is all for this episode. Um, you guys learned how to create a uh, repository on GitHub. And what I went through and t showed you guys how a lot of the stuff works, gave you some good keywords that you should know. Uh, in the next episode, we are going to do pushing using SmartGitHG. After that, we are going to do pulling. So if you make an update, someone else makes an update to the code and they put it up there, then you can download that update yourself easily. Um, as always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. It can be bucket related, or if there's uh, a GitHub thing that you want to learn that I'm not that I haven't mentioned, um, feel free to let me know. And if you like this video, please click the like button. And I will see you guys uh, soon, hopefully. Goodbye.